Hello from the Wild Tribe. And so we had an amazing day this morning at Crop Swap. And that was in Jimboomba. Now I've got some fermented tomato seeds, which I saved from the previous Crop Swap. These gorgeous little teeny tiny, I'm going to pause it and show you. So these tomatoes, they're tiny and they're beautiful. Just perfect for a salad, they're just the right size, they're so teeny tiny. And they've kept for four weeks, like jar always sort of, you know, keeps it a little bit better. So I fermented them, and I'm going to show you how to ferment some seeds today. Because someone today had baby Roma tomatoes. I don't think they're the Thai pink egg tomatoes, which I've been chasing. They look a little different. But I've got these today in a lovely bag um, with some rosemary. And the only reason I took it was for these, to save the seeds and just see what happens. Um, we're big tomato fans, huge tomato fans. So I'm going to show you how to ferment those today. Um, but with the seeds, I'm going to pot them up tonight. And I thought I'd show you all how I make my paper pots. Really simple. I get the neighbours to save me their papers. And for seedlings, depending on what they are, um, I just do a small pot. So if I know I'm going to, say, plant them quite soon and I've got everything prepared and I know that I'm right to go, I'll cut a large sheet in half and just make a small pot because these go straight into the ground. There's no waste. It's so beautiful. So I will cut a large sheet in two pieces. If I think, oh, I need it to stay a while, I'm not ready, you know, I've got something in my mind that I, I want to do up the back and this, this, this and this, but there's about, you know, 15 steps to go or something, I will use a whole sheet of paper and a bigger glass. So we simply fold the sheet in half lengthways take a glass and you just pop it on you want enough room on the bottom so you can fold it at the end that's what you're looking at so I'll just make one large one and then I'll continue on making some smaller ones while I chat then just roll it all up like that and I like to go where this is I like to fold that in first put them all around and then as I take it off I pinch I pinch here and that's it what you do because it looks pretty flimsy doesn't it you're like oh, okay paper pot what is she mad no I'm not well, maybe I am a little bit when you put the soil in I like to hold it here, otherwise the soil gets trapped in there and I'm, I'm a bit pedantic with things, that drives me a bit nuts. When you put the soil in, you pack, pack that bottom in first and what that does is it gives a nice strong base to your pot. And then you fill your soil in, you can put your seeds in or your seedling, just say you've grown them in those plastic pots and you're ready to pop them out and put them in somewhere, perfect. They last, as long as you're not moving them around everywhere, for, I've had them, those mulberry trees were out there for three months in one of my other videos and they'd gotten quite deteriorated, like when I went to move them after they'd grown their leaves, but I hadn't touched them in all that time, when I went to move them they just fell apart. So I'd say a month safely um, of not moving and watering on a daily basis. So that's that one. Then I'm going to plant, I'm going to make these while I'm chatting to you. I'm going to plant up some seedlings of those little tomatoes and I've already got somewhere just perfect to put them. I've been talking about this outdoor garden, um, outdoor kitchen, sorry, for a while. And my partner just went and got me the tires from right up out the back. Now, as I've mentioned, we're subtropical. We do get a lot of snakes here. So the grass was crazy up behind the sheds. I haven't shown you that on one of the videos yet. 
that the grass was crazy and it was just like, oh, Jode, you know, I'm going to need a spotter. I need someone there just in case one comes out. It's perfect breeding ground to be long, huge grass. Um, we've got chickens all around us and livestock and, um, you know, these tyres, this beautiful warmth for those slithering ones. Completely understandable. I'm like, you know, just take your time. When you get to it, you get to it. Unfortunately, someone stole my canoe. Oh, it's a kayak, actually. Um, from the side of our house. So he's gone looking just in case, you know, one of our friends come around and with the rain and the wind thought, oh, we'll move that for them or something. Um, which happens a bit. You know, people are very thoughtful and very kind like that. However, unfortunately, this time we weren't so lucky. And someone has my canoe somewhere that I've just got back after separating from my ex-husband five years ago. Having babies the last two years unexpectedly and can't wait to get back on the water. Our youngest just turned one last month. So I'm thinking of, oh, you know, I should be able to jump up to the dam and jump in and go for a yak. No. Someone's needs were greater than mine. So while he was out looking for that, today he's um gone right i'm moving those tires so straight away this afternoon while the kids were asleep i went and grabbed them from where i had them and started to organize the outdoor kitchen and at crop swap today i also found the pigeon peas which i've been searching for to sort of put nitrogen back in the soil they grow nice and tall um, they're a great biomass too, like you can chop and drop them for, um, you know, building up the garden bed biomass and mulch and things like that without having to pay, you know, the extras. They grow great in this kind of climate as well. So I'm sort of looking at all that, got the tires ready and I'm like, great, I've got those baby tomato seeds. I've got the type, um, the Greek basil that I love that I've already mentioned seeds ready to go i've got these beautiful chili capsicums now i used to buy these i used to go to Naran farmers markets all the time just to get these because they make they're the best in um zucchini grapes so i seen those today and i'm like great i'm saving the seeds of those and they're going to get done as well so we're going to do all of those things tonight and now that I've showed you well and truly how to make tiny little seedling pots, I will go and fill them up with soil a bit later on. Now, this probably isn't the best job, but never mind. First of all, let's show you how, where's my knife to do? Oh, I also got some jalapeno seeds that I dried out from Crop Swap as well. You take a sharp utensil, a toothpick, a skewer, a knife, whatever you've got handy, and you just want to poke it on the bottom. I like to just do it there on the bottom. So it comes off the stem here, and I just go on the bottom there. And just make a nice little slit. Oops. And we're going to squeeze all the seeds out. Yes, the pulp's coming out too. It's all nice and juicy. I'm doing an omelette in the morning, so that will go in with my omelette in the morning. And just take as many seeds out as you can. Now, the reason why we do this and we're going to ferment them is tomatoes usually rot before they grow. So, you know, when you've grown a tomato plant and some have fallen off, and you're like, oh, I've got wild tomatoes. Wow, that's cool. It's because they're rotting in the ground and then they've come up. So, we ferment the seeds. And start that process and then store them and they're ripe and ready to go then mmm that's got a really good tomato flavor that's good oh they're gonna be really good so you can see in there lots of fluid and pulp now we just put a bit of water in People going about, you know, a cup and you do this and you do that. I like to put enough in because what happens is your seeds will come to the top. They're no good. Chuck them. You'll actually get a skim over it as well. And that's like a, like a mother because it starts to ferment. Um, 
and already we can see there's seeds in here. How's that working? Nope. I can't work this properly. I'm not very tech savvy. Um, but yeah, you can already see there's seeds here on the top. So they will get chucked. The fermentation process will actually eat away the pulp and all that as well. And then when you drain them out in a sieve and I just dry them on the um, dishcloths, you end up with seeds. And you save them and they grow into your little babies of food in abundance. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna save these seeds. They're gonna take a while to dry. So I'll just leave them on a plate somewhere to dry and then I'll repot them. But tonight I will fill this and we're going to grow these little babies. So I'll let you know how we go. And I can't wait to show you guys. Um, so yeah, I started off the garden for the kitchen. I've got tomato over right now. And I just put in the tire down. And the tire is probably only this big. We're not talking, it's a tractor tire, but it's not a huge one. Um, and I've been saving lots of food scraps and things like that just in the kitchen so when I'm chopping up the fruit and the veggies for dinner or afternoon tea or whatever I just keep them in a bucket and when the worm bins that I have in the garden are too full because they're only small um, I just freeze them and then I take the bag out when I'm going to do a new garden bed and I throw that down and I've just mulched it over really heavily with heaps of the um, clippings and mulch and for my chop and drop and then I'll put some soil on over the top let that settle because it's all got to come into you know like fill all the gaps and have the rain come and let it settle you don't want to plant in there too quickly and then have it drop like this much and it just not look the way you want it to look or be the way you want it to be so you might need to top it up so that'll give me plenty of time for these little guys to get going and then we'll have lots of pretty little tomatoes. And I'm going to do the pigeon peas. I'm so excited about those. So this lovely lady had these today. I'm just going to sit down up on my bench. That should take, I don't know, anywhere. It's really hot at the moment, um, on and off. You know, like we're, we're already in the 30s. Easy. And humidity is insane. So there's, sometimes that can take easy two to three days. Sometimes it can take a week and a half. But you'll see when that is fermenting, you'll see the scum on the top. I'll do an update for you as well to see like what I look for. Everyone has their own little ways. So I've just cracked this pot open and these are the seeds for the pigeon peas. Oh, I better get that so the baby doesn't get it. So I'm gonna plant them tonight as well. Now they grow nice and tall. They fix nitrogen to the soil, um, even this, will have nutrients in it so that's going to go you know in my next lot of frozen stuff and i've got a whole heap of them in there i didn't take too many because i'm sure i'm not the only one chasing pigeon peas and i'm going to pop those in my little planters and they're almost ready that garden bed because we've been putting down a heap of um mulch already just in an area where i sort of wanted them but it's really, the whole outdoor kitchen's just come to life in my head today. I've got a passion fruit flower um, fruiting plant ready to go today at Crop Swap. I found the pigeon peas. I've walked the earth out there. I've connected with it. I've seen the vision. And it's totally different to what I thought that I wanted. You're going to hear my children. Bless them. But that's time for mommy to stop. But yeah, so I've got the tire already prepared to go without the topsoil. It's just got the compost um, happening in there at the moment. And <laughs> bedtime's always a fun time with kids, isn't it? So yeah, now it's time to sort of plant around it. I'm going to do some lemongrass for some more biomass and chop and drop because I don't want to be spending a lot of money. It's not that I'm tired, it's that I'm tired. Um, I don't want to be spending a lot of money on mulch and things like that when you don't have to. You know, I've got lemongrass that I've subdivided. There's probably about 15 plants out there. Um, and I can plant them around and use them to help direct the water as it comes through during the rainy season. You know, sort of build it up and if I'm clever enough, 
And we've just had so much rain too, it's really been able to help me map out the yard as well. So I should be able to, you know, plant those just to help sort of push that water along where it needs to, build up mounds of mulch and sort of bring all that water into, say, the pigeon peas or, and lemongrass likes its water anyway, but it also likes the sun. Um, and then I can just chop it when it gets really, because um, it just goes dry and you've got to kind of re renew it. So instead of pulling it out and subdividing it like I have been doing, I'm just going to chop the bugger down now, throw that stuff straight on the ground so it's a good mulch, putting all those nutrients back into the soil. And I'll have my pigeon peas for the nitrogen. Um, we've got sweet potatoes ready to go as well to break up all that clay soil. And we should be almost ready for a complete mapped out food forest for the next grow season. All right, guys. Much love. Oceans of love from Herding Home with the Wild Tribe. Bye for now.